Uh, one of the things that I've done for years is, is uh, virtual worlds where people walk around in characters and they're called avatars. It's been done for about 20 years and online. And now it's a huge industry. There's not only multiplayer games, but there's worlds where people design their new persona, including very elaborate fashions. And so I wrote books about this stuff, held conferences. These guys all, all came yeah. to the conferences. And so about three years ago, we worked with Fashion Institute of Technology in New York, which is a giant state university in New York campus. It's two blocks of Manhattan. Mm. And it's in the middle of the garment district. It's a great place. And it's the biggest school in the world for the apparel business. And a professor there, I met her at SIGGRAPH conference, her name is Daria DeRoche, and she got fascinated by the idea that fashion was going into online worlds, mm -hmm. but that the mm -hmm. garment business didn't know about it, <laughs> which is typical because couture, forget about it, they're living in their own world, mm -hmm. but, but their mainline apparel business is living in the 18th century, where everything's done by patchwork assembly, and there's very little, you know, it, it's very conservative. So we did a project called Ritava's Line, where her students designed incredible garments. That, garments that even if you wore them on the streets of Manhattan, people would stare, which is a lot. Yeah. One kid, one yeah. kid uh, made these dreadlocks out of strips of torn out Brooks Brothers business suits, <laughs> which is kind of a statement in itself, right? This incredible yeah, kid. Used clothing yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so then what they did, then we built a virtual world where uh, other set of students made these garments on avatars. And so there they were in a fashion show. We had the whole press in New York, the whole like industry press, and a big screen and these students parading out with their garments and then on screen with the virtual garments. A little different, a little bit different. And that was where we kind of introduced this idea that fashion was going into cyberspace, or that your identity, which includes what you wear. And we go to Burning Man every year, and that's an experimental playground for people putting together incredible garments. And uh, on the, also, on the other side, was all these gadgets are emerging, where you have, now you have a little clip-on shuffle for $49. Have you seen those? They asked for those. And you had iPods and things. And so the idea, there's this convergence of a breakout from the, the banality of the t-shirt and jeans for the nerd culture, or the business suit, or whatever, the breakout is happening in places like Burning Man. It's also happening in cyberspace. But there's a driving factor, which is you're now clothing yourself in your tech. Mm -hmm. You're not sitting. In, in the future, people aren't going to sit for, you know, 20, like me, 20 hours a day in front of a great big large screen just doing this. Kids don't want to do that. They want to be mobile. They want everything on their bodies. So they're clothing themselves in their digital identities in the real world. And actually, these these things are communicating their position with GPS, so that other kids know where they are in the real world. So the virtual world is being mapped into wow. physical world. And so I said, well, if I'm doing stuff on avatars, I've got to learn how far this can go. And Daria said, well, I'll tell you, nobody in the apparel business understands the iPod and the fact mm -hmm. that women are put in purse. In in New York, she said, what a, a common a common accident in the New York subway is a girl with an iPod, she's bringing it out, she's trying to adjust something and, and the subway doors close on the on her uh, headphones and, and pulls everything apart. <laughs> and you know, the iPod falls down on the tracks and it's run over by the subway and you know, people are screaming and whatever. It's the biggest end of the world thing. So the idea that... It's a bit sort of cheering. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what she, what she did was, she said, well, MIT, that's Massachusetts Institute of Technology. We're FIT. Why don't we invite those guys down to show us how they would actually have a way to garb yourself in your gear? And they came down as a guy named Steve Mann who has these like monocles. It looks like he's from the board <laughs> and he's been assimilated. And they yeah. did this. They did this conference with MIT, and they were horrified. The mostly female fashion professors were there, like stiff and stark. Stark disgust and terror because the things were so <laughs> ugly. It was Aliens. painful to look at. It absolutely no sense at all. It was pure nerds, right? <laughs> sort of pure stuff. And so they never wanted to talk to people like that ever again. <laughs> <laughs> and they, and the, the nurse didn't understand why they asked, got no questions asked after they showed up. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way to describe how awful. 
Well, they, they call it there. Gulf War Couture. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> before Iraq, it would be called <laughs> Gulf War Couture. Yeah. So, you know, and, and for those guys, the coolest fashion was like Laura Croft, you know, in Tomb Raider. And so that all went away. And so I said, you know what, I'm going to take this on. I'm going to actually learn how to sew. <laughs> and I'm going to try to make something. There was a book I read, I don't know if you guys read it, it's called Snow Crash. It was a great book by Neil Stevenson. And in, it was written in 1990, it was about cyberspace. And there was a girl in there named YT who had all the gear on her body and she could go on a hoverboard and she took out an entire federal building in Westwood with all her gear and her wares. And I always wondered, what did YT wear? She's 14, she has enough gear on her body to wipe out the entire to knock out, physically knock out all these federal agents and get information, you know. But it had to be cool what she wore. She's 14, mm -hmm. she's a girl. Mm -hmm. yeah, and she has a hoverboard, so she's got to be cool. So that was Neil Stevenson. So what did YT wear? And so putting all that together, I started looking at the types of fashion that were out there. There was goth in the young community. Goth is goth. It will never change. It's, we know it, we love it. But it's, it's, not, it's, tech. it's not tech. They don't want to be tech. And then there's punk, and punk is punk, and it's a genre that's already established. You can't really twist a genre. That's, you can't change a genre that's out there. And then there's bikers who have stuff on. Then there's old middle-aged guys who have giant vests with pockets in them. And, and people like us who carry cameras and stuff, and that's ugly, no teenager would ever wear that. So I said, where are the sources for the coolest fashion in the world? And I started reading Neil Stevenson's giant trilogy, and it was all about the late renaissance and they were describing the garments and I said you know what there's this whole thing called the renaissance where where the Europeans learned how to sort of rip off a lot of goods from around the world and they had a huge amount of material pouring in like silks and stuff like that and all the skills came in and suddenly fashion hit a peak around 1700, 1680 or something like that and, and it declined and down into the industrial revolution it declined but the elaborateness of the costumes of Louis the Fourteenth, the Sun King, Ooh. were unbelievable. I mean, there's nothing ever has equaled that, the wigs and all of the bizarre stuff. So I thought, well, that's never been mined, and that's never returned. It's like happy days, you know, it brings the 50s back. How do you bring that kind of thing back? So when I went, I said, I went to learn how to sew. I went down to uh, one of the sewing stores. There was a lady there who was doing a sewing class, and this is how ignorant I was. I go, go in there and I sign up. Pay my seventy-five dollars for four classes. It's such a bargain. It's in Santa Cruz. In Santa Cruz. At Hearts or something. At, at, at Hearts. Yeah. Hold this for a second. I gotta get another. And um, Is it so ready? I sign up. I, uh, and that's where I'm running. I say I'm ready to do. I'm ready. Yeah, and then I'm Jill, ready. Jill Sanders is her name. She's an incredible sewing instructor. She says, um, uh, "Where's your machine?" <laughs> I say, "What machine? Where is your machine?" And she, she looked at me up and down. She said, "Okay, go to this place." And, and buy exactly this machine. You know, it was an $800, it was a good machine, it was a Swiss machine. Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, so, so I came back and said, here's the machine. <laughs> okay, pick your project. She slammed down this giant pattern book. It was huge. So I started going through it, and I found, I went into the costume set, and there was this thing called a doublet. Were you the only man in the class? I was the only man. Like Instagram? There's this thing called yeah. a doublet. And I said, that looks yeah. cool. I'd like to wear that. It's really cool. So I said, what about this? And she looked down and she looked at me. Thanks. And she sort of made the split second decision about either I was nuts because this was really hard oh for a first thing, or I might be able to actually pull it off, or it'd be fun to see me fail, or something like that. <laughs> she said, all right, you know, we'll get the pattern, we'll start getting the materials. And I made it. And a lot of help. I mean, a lot of learning. And I forgot to bring in. I should have brought it. Yeah. The first yeah, one. It's all. Yeah, really. It's beautiful red. Um, all um, Celtic knot themes, aligning, and everything. And then, as I was finishing that, I started having a vision in my head for the next one, and it was this one. And so I started doing a draw. draw I wanted. I wanted to make something that was a merger of the Renaissance, but it was tech. Um, and the base material, and I found out later, this was impossible. <laughs> this, is, this is embossed velvet, yeah. theatrical velvet from Opera. And I got this, this is normally $200 a yard, and I got a, a, swat, like a two yard piece for 20 bucks because it was left over. Mm -hmm. 
And then I wanted to have pockets. The idea was, how do you control the cord? Right? How do you, so it doesn't get caught in the subway. Well, one way is to put it behind a mesh. That's a cool way. Because you want, and also you want to show off the beautiful design of the iPod. You don't want to hide it in a pocket. Why not show it off? So the whole thing was that you could run the iPod right through the yeah, interface. Sure. You could cool. even put it off and hold. And then, so the, the, then the idea came to me, because I'm a computer collector, the greatest early microcomputers are called S100 computers. And what they were was they just a bare bus with slots. And you could put anything you wanted in them. And that was the open architecture in 1975. So I said, well, most cyber garments are bad because they build in things. They build wiring in and stuff. That's not what you want. You want to hack your own thing. You want to have channels. So the idea of this is all channels. So I can put a cell phone in there, run, run a cord either behind there. I can run cords out from the bottom of there. I can run a cord all the way through the back and up here if I wanted. It's all mm -hmm. accessible. So there's channels and buses to allow you to wire things the way you want. It, it's not pre predetermined. And then all these different pockets. So pockets that were narrow for new things like iPods, or this is a LED light. Or, you know, po a wide pocket for a camera. And here's the camera here. And then another thing occurred to me, which was that the apparel industry is clueless about. What's that sound, by the way? It is. What's that? Uh, I think that it's the washing machine. What if you screw up? Because this is like sculpture. If you yeah. cut the piece of material out, you've screwed up for good. So I said, well, I'm going to make everything on Velcro panels. <laughs> so these are Velcro panels, completely removable. Mm -hmm. These are removable sleeves. This is a removable peplum, it's called. So that, And then it occurred to me, wait a minute, this is all about accessorization. If I bought this basic jacket, I could add this panel on later. I could buy it separately. Because if you go buy an iPod, you can buy a socks for it. Mm -hmm. You could buy recorders for it, whatever, accessories. And the apparel business have never understood that. Mm -hmm. That you should be able to get a garment and add stuff later. And there's a huge economic benefit to doing that. And they're just <coughs> clueless about it. So I then embodied the next idea, which was you could put jewelry on things. You could have standard attach points for things that would be, say, standard even clips. The next one's going to be vinyl and leather and really street tough. But it's going to have standard size uh, attach points. Then you could have people who make the jewelry to attach to it, like people who make stuff for iPods, and who might make a panel uh, so that you can change the total look of the garment overnight just by plopping a new panel. Yeah. It turns out that after sewing through 25 yards of Velcro in multiple layers, to make this effect of having a pocket, it's it's basically this is the weird material behind here. I wanted a 3D effect. This is a spandex webbing over a holographic spandex, and you can kind of see how it looks. Yeah. That's cool. And the color is really great. nice. Yeah. And you, some I told somebody I, what I did, and they said that's impossible. You can't attach a material like this to a material like embossed velvet. You just can't do it. I said, well, I just did it. And I, I did it through by sewing through 30 yards of Velcro and on the back of the pa package it says, do not machine sew. After I finished the garment, <laughs> you saw that. <laughs> but, um, so back to this, this is... Um, it's a good Swiss machine. Yeah. Now, it, was, it was a denim needle too. This is women's fishnet stockings. As I was searching around for something that already had a top lining that I didn't have to make. And, and it's in totally indestructible. You could put something really heavy in there and it'll never break. And that's what this is. It was funny going into the store and buying all these different types of stockings <laughs> and things. Here. <laughs> and they tried to explain that this was a project. <laughs> what, are but, the, what are the clips on the sleeves? They're quite pretty. Yeah, these are just pot boiler uh, clasps that I got in a uh, local sewing store. Mm -hmm. But the idea is that, yeah, and this is from the Renaissance also, that you can unclip this and unfold this and take this off, but this keeps it ventilated. Mm -hmm. And so it's a split, it's called a split sleeve. Hmm. So the whole jacket's a bunch of modules. Yeah, it's a bunch <coughs> of modules. Yeah. And, um, <coughs> this, this is still, I've still got to finish this. The, ne <coughs> the next version, well, it turns out that this, I just wore this in places. And I wore it, to, I wore it into the Apple store. <laughs> I went, the first place I went was the Apple store in Palo Alto. And actually, 
it was funny because we brought this wire wrap, Macintosh number no. five wire wrap from 1983, right? That's it's a prototype of the Mac. So we bring this in, and I'm wearing this, and these the Apple genius is wearing the green t-shirts. Run over, and they go, "Where did you buy this? This is so cool. This is true iPod fashion." Because I never never seen it. And I said, well, I'll tell you more later, but we, our Mac is not working. We held this a wire. <laughs> and we brought it back and put it on the counter. And Yeah, it's, uh, what's the serial number of this? There is no serial number. This is the, uh, <laughs> you were faking them out, huh? We were faking them out. Yeah. Um, but I wore it at Mac, I wore it at Mac World. And there were crowds of people around me at Mac World. I tried to talk to the Apple people about it. I still haven't gotten an appointment to talk to them. But what's... What turned out at Macworld, they announced, uh, Levi's announced they're going to come up with jeans that have clips mm -hmm. for at least, so they're kind of getting into it. Uh, and I have no idea whether this is commercially viable or not. I have friends in Pakistan who have factories that can crank stuff out. But, so I just wear it everywhere and get a response, because I don't know how to market in this industry or whatever. But Daria then has come up with this show in February 27th, you know, in furthering the project, it's called what men want, colon, hot fashions. <laughs> so what we're going to do is, is several things. We're going to have in the AIR gallery in Soho, we're going to have a big, big press crowd. Hopefully we'll have GQ and, you know, lots of people there, uh, depending on her pull and how she can get them out. February's good because it's dead mm -hmm. in, that, in that business. And we're going to have a big screen. You guys should come to New York for this. Yeah, that's a, good. Yeah, big that's screen. Good. On the Behind on the screen, we're going to be showing Burning Man pictures, and we're, then we're going to run live, run Second Life, which is this multi-user avatar space, mm -hmm. which has people who make a full-time living designing credible costumes for avatars, and they sell them in the economy there. Then we're going to have people coming in, wearing men too, wearing bizarre costumes that they might wear at Burning Man, they're wearing in world. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to have me, and I'm going to try to make another garment, I'll probably have somebody modeling this one and I'll make a new one. The new one's all snakeskin vinyl strips going to be uh, it's hellaciously hard work to do this if anybody wants to help volunteer come and work um, and clips like gold clips to control this and snaps and velcro what I'm actually going to do is to take the, the cool little jackets you can buy for these things and just velcro them into the garment they can be removed but they're actually so you just put it in the thing that because you know, there's really cool little covers and skins for these things now and uh, it's all going to be very sheeny and nice, and I've got to figure out how to make it breathe, and and it should be done. It'll look very different. I'm going to do pants to match it. So there'll be strips of snakeskin vinyl down here to whatever boots I've got, and all kinds of stuff. So it's going to be incredibly dramatic. <laughs> and so that I hope you know I've got all the material, but I hope it'll be done by February 27th. And so. That'll be that show, and maybe that'll kind of kick it off, I don't know. Because if there's a big story about it, you know, it might create a kind of a movement or something. So the next thing you're going to do is that going to be sort of modular plug-in kind of architecture that you're doing with this jacket? Yeah. Or <coughs> yeah, is that an important part of still what you're thinking Still removable sleeves, because yeah. it, it's a basic thing. In the Renaissance, they used to like have no, in the summer when they were with their lover in the grass, they would not have their sleeves on, so they have the balloony shirt coming out. You just have this, and it was really nice. So cool then you could take in those old jackets, you could take the sleeves off. Yeah, they were with. They used something called twill tape, and they were tied mm -hmm. on yeah. in points oh, okay. all around. What kind of tape? Twill tape. It's you still buy it. It's still called twill yeah. tape. Um, there are two things that worry me. One is the Velcro. Because I would think that although the base, there, there should be some way that the Velcro, the outside Velcro, mm -hmm. um, has a grommet or something so that it can be attached from the inside so somebody can't just steal the thing. Yeah, this is yes, hard to get off. Yes, you've thought of that? It's hard to okay. get off. It's good. Hard. And so I that's always good. put the fuzzies on the garment. <laughs> that's good. so smart. Yeah. So actually, I, I haven't yeah. finished this last panel back here and it's all... Yeah, so you don't get stuck on anything. Yeah, the hooks and the things. Yeah. And the other is, you say these fishnet stockings work well, but yeah. in fact, um, uh, could someone with a, uh, you know, knife slash it and grab something? Oh yeah, I mean, but the, 
<laughs> you could do that with your pussy, though, in your purse. Yeah. 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 I think that would only pocket. happen in a movie, yeah. though. Yeah, I think well, you know, I'm not true about that. But anyway, it, well, it depends on how vulnerable. I mean, if you were wearing your camera, uh, you know, in your back peplum or something, I can see somebody coming yeah. Yeah, can, and slashing the stuff and you, taking people it. People get pickpocketed all the time. So, I well, mean, that's true. It, it would probably be harder for a pickpocket who's used to a certain type of pocket to mm -hmm. figure out how to get into the Well, that's thing and, true. Mm -hmm. That's like, true. Like, wait a minute, it's right up. And one of the focuses I have is in the new garment, everything's going to be attached. The only place you can attach this stuff is right in this corridor right here. You can't put anything under here because <coughs> you brush off it. You don't want to put it back here. So it really is a secure zone. Yeah, Could you install an alarm system? Or a taser. <laughs> 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 a couple of things. Oh, that's things. it. Could be like a motion detector camera. Right. right. <laughs> exactly. Take a photograph of the assailant. <laughs> there, there's something ironic mm -hmm. about about it um, that. There's, there's, it's, it's similar to, to me to, to work clothes. You know what I mean? The, the kind of um, things that mechanics wear mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. uh, people, pe men, tool uh, principally tool, tool belts. belts. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, it's ironic in an interesting well, way because this is a, f a fun, this is not your work right, jacket, right. this is your fun, fun right. jacket. Yeah. But, but the other thing is, it's got to be hideously expensive, just like Louis. The you know, I mean, it's so. There's a kind of a. a and so the key. The yeah. Key for me, it's like if I designed these things, and someone actually picked it up. Miracle, miracle! Somebody just yeah. funds a line. Well, I might want to just sell the thousand dollar thing, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and that's mm -hmm, it. And, and mm -hmm. people who want to copy it and make simpler versions, that's fine because they yeah. will. Because yeah. the fashion business is totally open source. Everyone steals. Right. Equally so from everybody. Us. There's no right. and there's no enforcement. Right. It, it just it's an amazing thing, really. Yeah. Um, right. So yeah, I, I would want to make the high end thing. That, yeah. The thing that somebody might pay, like two hundred dollars to get in, and then add gradually add stuff and decorate it. Yeah, that's, that's They go to the club and the party. And they're going to spend that much money on other things in their lives anyway. Yeah. Mountain bikes, two thousand dollars and things like that. So. Well, I suppose if you're in the tech buying um, class, you could also buy a piece of clothing that's going to accommodate that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, and kids, you know, kids, it's amazing what they spend on. No, I, 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 we have one. Well, he doesn't spend all that. I, I would, mm -hmm. Alex Lightman, uh, a couple of years ago, was trying to uh, promote a, a business that was wearable computers. Mm -hmm. and how would you see this sort of interfacing with that, or well, is, is the state of the art there yet with well, those? The, th the thing is, all of these are wearable computers. Yeah. I mean, they're all, and, and if you looked at this, I mean, when this was, this was designed a year and a half ago, that was an iPod size. The new iPod yeah. shuffle is a belt clip. The clip on the back and the iPod on the front, 240 so songs that you just put, you know. A cuff link? Yeah. It's amazing. Cuff link. The, 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 yeah, our cuff Whoa. link is... It, it's amazing how rapid this thing changes. So really, you can't actually make a garment. You have to make a garment that's, that predicts how you would use stuff in the future. And and they talk about convergence, like oh, it'll all be in one cell phone. Why would you? But it doesn't seem to ever happen. There always seems to be a multitude. And kids are going to want to have displays. In in Sweden, a friend of ours at this this is part of going to be part of a university project in Sweden too. They have these cell phones that Ericsson makes that have these weird little sort of projector displays with little Fresnel lenses on them that you pull out of the phone and you can hold it up and you can read, you can see it from across a stadium practically. Oh, and and right. people, there's like scrolling text for somebody's name. So it's a projector? It's a little projector that, it's like that Nixie tube watch that Waz was wearing. Yeah. And so there's all these kinds of things. There's going to be gadgets, there are going to be displays in garments mm -hmm. that do things. and. There's going to be things we can't even dream of that'll be in. Oh, like neon signs. Like we have a friend who designs, who was one of the original Mac people, who designs like moving uh, letter signs. You know, yeah. That are Electroluminescent panels. Electroluminescent. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, so remember the old, you know, you know, the old Wiggly mm -hmm. picture. You know, oh, well, you're too young for that. Huh? Yeah. Well, it was just these little. They're little rod, They're tiny rods. Um, well, you, 
tiny pyramid. Yeah, um, uh, it's a tiny prism. Yeah. Large prisms, and you bend it, and you know the image moves because you yeah. actually Let's go back to the 50s. Right. And there's yeah. speaker cloth now that does 8 bit two channel audio. It's wow. just a piece yeah. of cloth wow. that can emit, can vibrate and emit. Mm -hmm. You know, it's fairly tinny sound, but it works. See, it's something interesting. You can't get it, you wouldn't be able to patent that. <clears throat> but you could, it might be worth looking into copywriting the design concept. Yeah, and it's <coughs> because branded. design yeah, because if you, if you if you if you copyright the design concept of it, um, it lasts it could, forever. You could file patents, but you then have to have well, patents patents last only a few years. Copyrights copyright. last but forever. Well copyright but I think it would be not a copyright idea that's quite Well no you, it's I'm a design el you copyright the design element of it. You can't this is a design. Um, you can. You can. Yeah. Well, you can. Well, Coca-Cola isn't patented. It's well, that's a trade no, but the thing is, right. if you yeah, copyright, copyright a design, copyright design it, basically, if somebody makes a very trademark. small modification, it's fine. Yeah, so in, it's and like, in the apparel mm -hmm. business, it's all. There's yeah. no. Everyone just copy, 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 copy right. instantaneously. Yeah. Yeah. No, mm -hmm. It doesn't actually make any. If you copyrighted it, it wouldn't make any difference. So the see only. So for me, for this project to go forward, I really need to. Find someone who would look this up and down and say, there's a market, it's high end, mm -hmm. it's, it's not couture, it's a, something else. It's a segment that hasn't existed in apparel for 200 years. And you could maybe it's up super. The leather shops, you know. Yes, yeah. super yeah. fancy costumes. Right. Well, there you it's go. Not, it's not that's it. Are you? Yeah, yeah. Renaissance festivals <laughs> are like that because these things cost hundreds of dollars. Mm -hmm. You go to a Renaissance festival, the boots are like $500. Yeah. And, you yeah. know, most. That's Most civilians who go to Ren, Ren fairs and look at that, they don't understand mm -hmm. that the they are worth $500, the yeah. time it's in them and the materials. Yeah. Have you ever worth, walked yeah. into the vault with it on? With the, the vault? The vault, the vault. Yeah. Yeah. downtown. Yeah. is an artistic jewelry store. And yeah. Oh, no. Jewelry and That's pretty amazing. Oh, okay. <laughs> because they, I mean, they yeah. have a wow. lot of really interesting furniture, knives, clothing, scarves, I, wall I, things. In Sydney, I was in in Sydney and I went into different retail outlets and 50% of them, either a store manager came or somebody came over wanting to know where they could acquire these mm -hmm. for sale. Oh, wow. So that was... <laughs> you know, they, yeah. I mean, the people, the reason I ask is that the people at the vault work with a lot of designers and they, you, know, you may, I, I think what you need to happen is to be somewhere where someone knows the person that they want to put you together with. Yeah. You probably won't bump into that person, but you might bump into the six degrees of that that person. Yeah, that's and the, what I need the vault would be, you know, the, the woman at the vault has about 33,000 people in her database. And, wow. and she's, she has very unusual, I, I mean, you would enjoy looking I should around. have brought this, but one of the other inspirations, I have an ancestor who is Admiral John Harmon, who fought for Queen Elizabeth, he was an admiral of the fleet, and he was killed on board. He was a dandy, and there's a great picture of him in the. If you go to the Greenwich Maritime Museum, there's a 25-foot portrait of him. It's huge, it, right in the entrance, and he's like a short version of my brother. <laughs> he kind of looks. Maybe I'm a look, little bit like him, but he's he's like this tall, and and uh, it's supposedly the greatest maritime portrait ever painted. And I've never seen the live one, but I have. Copies of it, yeah. but he's wearing this unbelievable thing. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, so that was an inspiration too. Right. Yeah. Take a take a trip to Singapore, walk around there. I, um, mm -hmm. I no, it was too soon for yeah, Singapore. Yeah, Singapore. biggest department store in the world. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Ed McCullough is has been no. talking a little bit with you about uh, <clears throat> his uh, Spider Vision project, which is a situation where this technology is trying to innovate or develop for uh, mm -hmm. uh, NASA space exploration. Yeah, my, my day job is working with Brad on space simulations. <laughs> so <laughs> the, the, the concept <laughs> is that you take a distributed narrow focus set of uh, uh, image sensors and, and you can actually synthesize uh, or draw information about your 3D environment uh, from these this sort of distributed it's moving set of sensors. And yeah. if you were to embed in the clothing uh, uh, a set of, let's oh, say, 10 or 20 our sensors, our you know, friend Sun builds those things. I think they're, they're called they sunspots. And if just have like three sonar spots. What, what you need is a, you sew one in here, one there, you know, on the hips and whatever, and you walk along and you're moving your avatar in a world. And you could be, you could actually be building uh, 3D information. Two days ago. Mm -hmm. That's great. 
to, to input back into that virtual world. You could literally be building a world by walking down a city street. You could be building mm -hmm. building a virtual component of that. And Hollywood shows us this all the time. Mm -hmm. There's lots of films that show this kind of vision. So, so it's, it's like sort of taking a virtual picture of reality and then completely composing it in a virtual world. world. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Oh, just it's so transmitted by Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So, so if you're in a Wi-Fi zone, you're gathering from number of sensors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You have to have yeah. the system mm -hmm. in the world yeah. that yeah. would then yeah. transform yeah. that into the avatar. Yeah, one of the things Alan and I talked about for 14 years now is you walk into a room and there's this projection on one side and then you're seeing walking in as your avatar, so it's physically more virtual That's the old line, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Ability to be present with people. Yeah, exactly. in, in a in a body sense, well, standing out right. in height, you know, uh, in real time, but not just their video cast onto the wall, but it's a, a per, kind of a three D embodiment. This lip syncing, because we have a platform that we bought called Travel that lip syncs avatar. This is changing your mind to talk. But we have all the kind of backgrounds too. So we need the kind of portraits that Steve Wozniak had to go to at the Oz Festival. Yeah, it's well, we should do that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, well, we did the Peter Gabriel was called the Future Zone, right? That'd be fun. The Future Zone. Fun. We could do a Future Zone. Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah, we could do a Future Zone. Yeah. That would be great. That's kind of the end. If you want to see the project, go to cyber. Well, Damer.com. My last name. Or the site for this is called Cyberwares, C Y B E R, um, W E A R, like wearing oh. with a Z, W E A R Z, Cyberwares. Cute com. name. Yeah. yeah Cute name. Cyberwares. Com. <laughs> Has many uh, possibilities. So, you know, people who have put three million dollars into a clothing. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, right. Who knows? I'll form a we company might. and it'll happen. Six yeah. degrees of separation. Yeah. Yeah. Sort of a